these rides for the national anthem. at a, a, a dinner party that had gone a little bit wild. We were all telling quips and funny stories about uh, the political life. And this gentleman pointed across the room and said, you should keep an eye on that young buck over there. He's gonna make something of himself. And I looked over and it was this guy telling jokes and I, I leaned in and listened out of curiosity and he was telling the most fabulous joke that had been going around you know in the conservative emails and the the quoting people were quoting it to each other all the time and I heard him telling it and I listened and I thought well he's stealing the joke and I confronted him about it and I, I said, you, and he said, it's my joke. And it turns out he was the author of the funniest joke. The first time I met him was on an airplane. He was sitting next to me and uh, he's a pretty talkative guy and he seemed to really like me and we talked for, uh, we talked for, we talked to me for a long time and I don't know, I felt like we made an emotional connection. He's a really emotional guy. <laughs> I just, I love my country so much, and I, oh, I just, I, I love my country. <laughs> I think, I think he's got a lot to, I don't know, I think he's got a lot of problems. One night after a performance of Burning Bush, a faith-based musical, I was confronted by a member of the audience in an extremely ill-fitting suit. And he was very angry, he was upset, he didn't like the show at all. And, uh, you know, he just was screaming at me. He said we were bush bashing, uh, we were trying to help the dummy crats. He kept saying dummy crat, like that's a clever thing. Dummy crat, that's what I call dummy crats. And I do it for two reasons. <laughs> One, because they're dumb. And two, because they're dummies. And, you know, he just screamed at us uh, we, that I hated America and that the show wasn't funny. Now, my feeling is, if you want to say I hate America, fine. But... It was a very funny show. So we argued, and uh, at one point, 
Amanda came out to see what all the screaming was about, I know that Mr. Piss has claimed that Amanda hit him with her shoe. After the show, we got in a fight. The cis girl threatened me with her shoe. It never happened. Nothing like it ever happened. It's a complete lie. She did hit me in the face with her shoe. And obviously, I have the scar to prove it. So finally, just to move the conversation along, um, I started saying that, look, you know, even if we disagree about certain points, isn't it a great thing that we live in a country where we're both free to express ourselves and we can share ideas, you know, that whole bit. I said, look, if you've got something to say, say it, you know, put on your own show or start a blog or, you know, get your voice out there too. And then he started to get very, very excited about that and asked if I would help him. And, you know, I, I still don't know what made me say yes. This is very embarrassing, but I think on some level, uh, I was fascinated because he's so handsome. With Diamond's help, Piss began to blog. Soon he was posting scathing political commentary as well as audio rants, which he described as a radio show. George Washington is the father of our country, but God is the father of us all. For as the father of Jesus Christ, whose love is there for all who accept it, God willed a great nation to arise on this shining hill called America. And America, like Jesus Christ, is his son, and we are all his sons, and God's sons will march gloriously to battle against all those other people who are not God's sons whenever the time is right. And the right time is right now for the right. Right? This is Ralph Pierce promising to torture liberals until they admit they're terrorists. Thanks for watching, friends. Now go to work. He's relatively new to the scene. Uh, he's one of the new soldiers, as I like to call us. There's a, a, a band of conservatives, as it were, that kind of run behind the scenes here in Washington, D.C. Well, I'm on a computer. You know, I'm not the same as Heidi Klum, but I'm, I'm not on some fashion show program. And there's, you know, when people like Ben Affleck start talking about things, you have to... And Ben Affleck, you have to answer with in kind. The website also featured Ralph Piss's right-wing joke file, which would soon become the fodder for Piss's stand-up comedy act. Left-wing dominance of American comedy ends tonight. I'm going to make you laugh. What do you call a liberal who doesn't believe in God? A left-wing atheist? <laughs> what did Hitler say to Stalin? What? I really enjoyed that Michael Moore film. His performance debut in 2006 garnered a mixed reaction. He's an asshole. That's a total asshole. <laughs> um, he was trying to do something interesting and, you know, I commend that. I can't say I agree with anything he says. In fact, he's a terrible comedian. Why do left wing liberals want to burn the American flag? Because it's everything our poor fathers fought and died for? His <laughs> jokes are not only not funny, he can't even deliver them. He has no sense of presence. I was inspired. I didn't enjoy him. I think that that was interesting. I feel like it galvanized all these thoughts I had, and I'm ready to join the fight with Ralph. I'm ready to be one of his foot soldiers. A man is sitting alone in his house, and all his friends come to the door, and they say, there's a terrible storm coming, quick, let's evacuate, get to safety. But the man says, no, I believe in God, and I have faith in God, and God will save me, and I'm not going anywhere. And that's exactly what happened. God saved him. You didn't hear all this whining about levees. Yeah, I was, that was...